typically all we concern ourselves with is the mental effects or the neural effects, the brain effects yep. um, with caffeine. So I was just going to touch on that really quickly. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we have receptors in our, in our neurons or in our brain cells called adenosine receptors. Mm -hmm. And and, and over the course of the day, as ATP is broken down in the brain, ATC, ATP, adenosine triphosphate being the, the energy currency of basically every cell in our bodies, maybe mm -hmm. not red blood cells, but um, breaks, breaks down from a triphosphate, we break a phosphate bond, releases energy, break, it's now a diphosphate, break it down again, and it's now a monophosphate, break it down again, and now we just have an adenosine. Mm -hmm. And it's the, over the course of the day, there are, if I understand this correctly, enzymes in place that inhibit rephosphorylation. So typically we rebuild ATP so that we can break the bonds again, and we just keep on cycling ATP to keep energy coming. Mm -hmm. But over the course of the day, these enzymes cause a, uh, they basically inhibit this rephosphorylation so that adenosine just sticks as adenosine. As adenosine accumulates, it starts to stick to these receptors, and this tells us we're tired. We start to get drowsy. Mm -hmm. Caffeine is very much shaped like adenosine and can block those receptors. So it actually, it actually uh, 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 occupies the same space that the, the adenosine would occupy. Hmm. And so we, we basically mask the, the drowsiness or, 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 or keep it from taking place in the first place. Yeah. Problem is we habituate to caffeine usage. And, and what happens there is we get more of these adenosine receptors. So now we have to take more caffeine and what does the body say? Okay, I, I, you still need to get tired. We still need to sleep. More adenosine receptors. So at some point it tops out. And basically this is where we this is where we all get to. We get to a point where we're not really getting a buzz from caffeine anymore. We're just leveling out each morning. Mm -hmm. So we go to bed or, or, or we have our caffeine in the morning or over the course of the day. It just diminishes, diminishes, diminishes. We wake up in the morning, bring ourselves back up to snuff, and just go on about our day. Uh -huh. So, and, and this right. is typically what we look at. We're only looking at because we know it reduces RPE and it makes us, you know, makes us cognitively sharper. And there are all these mental benefits to it. And it doesn't really. We don't typically look farther than that. Uh -huh. And it's for this very reason that, other than the, its effects on iron absorption, I hadn't even considered what caffeine does to micronutrient and, and nutrient uptake. Yeah, it's something that never crossed my mind. Me neither. Yeah. yeah. So, it's can cool. I can it's I just just question. jump in with one thing really quick. Yeah. And so that really, when you're talking about our, our bodies habituating to it and not getting the benefit, that's why they've talked about like basically cycling caffeine usage, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then we can still get that buzz and yeah. the, the, uh, a more profound uh, psychological effect yeah. from it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which, and, and, and from a, a hyper user or even just people who are normal coffee drinkers i mean most it's it's like the most widely used drug in in yeah. the world <laughs> yeah yeah um so so pretty much everyone's on caffeine and pretty much everyone has tried for whatever reason or just had the uh, decision made for them to come off caffeine for a period of time and it's not a pleasant process it's yeah terrible. you've tried that right Amber? yeah with yeah. like a, but, but like amidst training and everything yeah else. Yeah. yeah so i was working with a nutritionist one year and we decided to give this sh a shot and see how it went i'm i'm a very typical coffee user i love coffee and i have it every morning That's so most bike racers are oh it's weird. Yeah. um <laughs> True. i'm really suspicious of bike racers who don't drink coffee <laughs> so am i yeah. or beer we're weird <laughs> or i'm super weird <laughs> <laughs> um, so we tried this where I did a, a week off of caffeine leading into a race. And then I had over 300 milligrams of caffeine, I think two hours prior to the race. And Whew. wow. So wow. On a couple fronts. Wow. Was it terrible to <sighs> not have my coffee every morning? Yeah. And what's funny about that is you remembered it as being a three week washout. Yeah. <laughs> and then she really looked great. at her notes and it was, it was a only week. a week. <laughs> It was sure so, felt like so it, right? in my mind, yeah. it was like, it felt like this three week slog. It was awful. Um, but then before the race and I had 300 milligrams of caffeine. I mean, it was, I was seriously jacked. Like, mm. and, and it was great. Like I felt super hyper-focused during the race mm. and I just, I felt like I was firing on all cylinders and it was this awesome sensation. But after the fact, when I really kind of evaluated the whole of the experience, I lost so much effectiveness on every training session for the week leading into the race yep. that I felt like on the whole, the benefit that I got on race day just wasn't, it, it, it wasn't, it didn't offset the losses because I'm still a big believer in, you know, you do a good training session one day, you build out a good week, you build out a good month. You know, that's how you're really going to make the gains and losing um, you know, just optimizing every training session to me just seems mm -hmm. yeah. worth more than, I don't know how much of a percentage benefit I really got at the crit. I don't think, I mean, it was interesting mm -hmm. and it felt pretty awesome, but I don't think it was that much better than 
And I can only help but see that as just another stressor you're heaping onto a pile already. Yes. I mean, training's hard enough, and if oh, caffeine is much. that little extra bit of something that so helps hard. it become tolerable, <laughs> it was so hard. And you can push yourself a little harder, and therefore make it more productive. Yeah, that's good a, point. It's a really yeah. strong can argument. Can I tell a quick funny story? Yeah, yeah, yes. of course. So one of my teammates. Yeah, actually, no, no, you're sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. no. Um, one of my teammates is this major coffee snob, and most cyclists I know are major coffee snobby snobs. about it. Yeah, and so we'll travel with you know, hand grinders uh-huh. and whole bean uh-huh. and the whole weight, uh, I'm sorry, scales and thermometers oh, for yeah. water super temperature, nerdy. super nerdy. Yeah. Um, so I had one of my teammates was very strict about this and she almost never, I mean, I'm kind of a coffee snob, but I'll have, you know, drip from the community pot any day, but she would get up early every morning and make her coffee, you know, hand grind everything. Uh-huh. And so one morning I got up, you know, we were usually the first two to get up. So I got up and I watched her kind of stumble around the kitchen and then she reached for the, the pot of drip coffee, the community pot and i was like oh man what's Desperate happening times. it was like the, yeah. the apocalypse yeah and i kind of looked at her i was like what are you doing and she looked at me with this mug in her head she goes uh i need a coffee to find my coffee uh, yeah <laughs> sounds about right <laughs> sounds about right it's like yep yep that's that. funny <laughs> yeah being on the other side of the fence it's pretty it's pretty nice to not have to have those sort of dependencies yeah, you're not weighed down but by, it by definitely so it definitely yeah and, and definitely on performance side of things though i i it, it absolutely helps mm. um what about on the nutrient and absorption side what could you okay. find out from that so um, a, l- a lot of this is largely based on a review i found a 2014 review um, which is just a uh, looks at a whole bunch of studies and mm-hmm. i think this went from like 2014 back to the earliest i saw was 2003 so we're looking at a 10-year span of, of uh Re- published research on the effects of caffeine on nutrient absorption. Um, authors Sedek Bolda, so W O L D E, 2014. If you're interested in looking at the study, you cool. can probably link to it. Uh, yeah, we can yeah, definitely we'll link, link to, it. to it in the forum. So iron, I knew uh, iron was was the thing I thought of when when we talk about caffeine disrupting nutrient absorption. But I don't think too much about it because I know how to how to circumnavigate or, or circumvent. Sorry, the interference. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, Caffeine intake interferes with iron absorption. The concern there is red blood cell production. Obviously, that's a concern as an endurance athlete, but as a, as a person, period. Um, and then there's a they've noted everywhere between 40 and 90% reduction when iron is combined with caffeine. And it depends on you know what you're eating, what your caffeine intake is, it's, uh, et cetera. But it really comes down to timing because mm-hmm. these effects don't even take place. There's no decrement or at least minimal, um, not not significant if you buffer it by an hour hmm. save your caffeine to an hour past your iron ingestion hmm. which and, and this goes for a few other micronutrients is is all the reason you should need to table your ca- caffeine until an hour past if you take a multivitamin or if you take any form of supplements give the ca- caffeine about an hour because it will interfere with some of them iron namely Interesting. This is like a very good justification for cyclists that like long coffee breaks long on their coffee rides. <laughs> ah, huh? yeah. 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 There we go. Excellent. So science backs you up. You're doing the right <laughs> thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Uh, quite, quite a bit actually. So, oh, no. <laughs> but, but there is a silver lining at the end of this. So don't, don't sweat it. Cool. Um, first off calcium. So for every 150 milligrams of caffeine ingested, and that's a pretty common dosage. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a pretty yeah. strong cup of coffee. Cup of coffee yeah. um, mm-hmm. it, it's not a hard dosage to get. Uh, for every 150 milligrams ingested, you lose about five milligrams of caffeine through urine and feces. So we discharge calcium. it. Calcium. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Calcium. Mm-hmm. So um, caffeine inhibits calcium absor- absorption in the intestinal tract also, hmm. and it depletes the amount that we retain in our bones. So small oh, impacts man. on both those fronts too. It, again, don't don't worry so much. So, so these are these are obvious <laughs> obvious bone health issues, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and these calcium losses can occur hours after the intake of caffeine. So Ooh. it's not it's not like it is with iron. There, there's not this narrow window where Double you. Double downer. Yeah. yeah yep. <laughs> Amber's just gonna be here soon. Yeah. But the recommendation is quite simple, and it's to limit your caffeine intake to one to two cups, three cups at the upper limit a day. Mm-hmm. Being, I'm gonna plug my ears. Being <laughs> you know 150 100. I think they consider a cup 100 milligrams grams of caffeine so we're looking at 300 being the the recommendation don't exceed 300 that's where they put moderate intake um, high, heavy intake or high intake however they term it starts at about 350 milligrams mm-hmm. and obviously some of this is going to be based on i would have to say the size of the person too i mean a 200 pound man yeah. versus a 100 pound woman 300 really milligrams is probably going to have a different effect right I don't know. so yeah. none of this is gospel but it is a recommendation to not overdo your caffeine intake mm-hmm. vitamin d also suffers um because caffeine inhibits vitamin d receptors mm-hmm. so just like the inhibition we talked with caffeine masking the, the adenosine receptors similar mm-hmm. here Interesting. and d is crucial in calcium absorption yep. so we got kind of a bone loss double whammy here <laughs> 
B vitamins. All good. <laughs> take, <laughs> wow. B, B vitamins. So caffeine is not. They've pretty much debunked the whole idea that it has diuretic effects, but it does have diuretic-like effects because it comes with a whole bunch of water. So mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. we we whiz it out. Yeah. Um, and anything that increases urination means that that water-soluble vitamins are kind of yeah Along subject for the ride. to to the loss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. we're going to whiz some of it out again. Um, interferes with the metabolism of. Uh, in particular, B, B, I'm sorry, B1, which is thiamine, and, and thiamine has to do with carbohydrate or glucose metabolism, nerve, muscle, and heart function. Hmm. So it's you know, a worthy concern. So that's my that may be where he was getting at with the original comment there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. A lot that's of what he said, and found plenty of information to to back it up. Yeah, um, and then. But caffeine also helps the body absorb B12. Yes! So there's, there's a small win for caffeine. And B12, <laughs> um, I can't remember, it's, it starts with a C, um, it, it plays a part in DNA synthesis, fatty acid metabolism, um, mm -hmm. amino acid metabolism. And then other vitamins and minerals of note, it could reduce your absorption of manganese, which hmm. has to do with, um, there's a function in the brain, central nervous system, enzyme production. Zinc, which as we all know, contributes to immune system health. Mm -hmm. Copper, which has to do back with iron absorption and red blood cell production. Um, it can increase the, incre uh, the excretion of, of uh, sorry, magnesium. Mm -hmm. which, as we all know, it plays a heavy heavy role in muscle and nerve function and a lot more, a lot of roles for magnesium. Yeah. Um, potassium can also be overly excreted, and that has to do with muscle function, in spe or specifically our heart and our respiratory muscles. Mm -hmm. um, and then sodium, and we've talked about sodium yeah. plenty, hydration, yes. blood pressure. I um, mean, then even phosph phosphate, which is, you know, we just talked about adenosine triphosphate becoming diphosphate. I mean, it's very crucial in energy right. metabolism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... Oh, and also interferes with the action of vitamin A. So <laughs> <It's not laughs> I'm just going to eat more on here. Get it all out. Um, so what you're saying is it tastes good and we should eat more? <laughs> <laughs> Wipe out the rest Sorry. of your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying be moderate. And, and just, just like anything else. I mean, if you get excessive with it, there are going to be repercussions. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So in defense of caffeine, it is still an antioxidant. And anything that's an antioxidant has myriad benefits. Anything mm -hmm. that reduces oxidative stress and free mm -hmm. radical damage... Is good for us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it stacks the deck in our favor in terms of uh, diseases that come with with aging, with with just about anything. Uh -huh. um, the, I already mentioned the effect on RP and performance. You mm -hmm. know, it just makes us feel like we can go harder. Cognition, of course, we feel sharper mentally, um, and then just as I mentioned, disease protection and prevention. And there's a direct correlation between caffeine intake and reduction in occurrence of cirrhosis. Yeah. Hey. So if you're a beer drinker and a coffee yeah. drinker, level playing field just wipes it out. <laughs> there's this great family that I stayed with. Science. Um, science. <laughs> science. There's a um, one of the host families I stayed with early on in my career. I still keep in touch with them. <laughs> one thing she said, I'll never forget it. I ride my bike to fill the cop the time between coffee and beer. That's yeah. perfectly sounds stated. About, yeah. Sounds about right <laughs> yeah yeah um so i guess what would be a moderate ingestion yeah so as i mentioned earlier and this pretty much carries across all the the papers cited in this particular review uh, is that 300 milligrams a day is a good cap mm -hmm. um, anything above that and you are f kind of putting yourself in maybe not harm's way but nutrient deficiency or mm -hmm. issues with nutrient absorption if we're talking like a specific if you're peaking for a race or something like that and you want to be you know Pinging for that, or race. maybe just in general, maybe maybe three hundred is and, and three cups of coffee. I mean, that's, that's a pretty a that's hefty. Yeah, yeah, that's that's I think enough for most people. Right. And yeah. there are people, and and this is a, a word of caution to people who think who, who pride themselves on the fact that they drink a ton of coffee. Yes. Maybe it's not the best thing. Right. I mean, yeah. do you really need me to tell you that though? When you're drinking your sixth or seventh cup, you of probably coffee? no. <laughs> they probably no. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Moderation in all things is like a, a universal principle, right? Yeah, it, it yeah. kind of is. I yeah, mean, I, I I see it as balance, but it's basically the same thing. Yep. Yeah, super yeah, exactly. interesting. I just learned a lot. Thanks, yeah, so did I. Yeah. That was awesome. my day yesterday. <laughs> Great question. If you like that video, check out these playlists for more of the same and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to become a faster cyclist, head over to trainerroad.com. That's what I'm going to do right now.